Hello people, Watch Bad Blows the Horn here. Um, and I'm blowing the horn as loudly as I can. I'm letting people know what time it is. And uh, so that we will know what we ought to be doing. Today I want to take a look at uh, a very, very important, um, important subject matter. You see, when the Lord returns um, after the rapture, when he comes down to the earth, he will summon two entities. Um, and one of the entities is this fly, Zebob, that dwells in the uttermost parts of the rivers of Egypt. Isaiah 7 verse 18. And I would like for us to identify who this fly is that the Lord is speaking of in Isaiah 7 verse 18. So, the word for the fly in this uh, passage is Zebob. Okay? Uh, so, from an unused root meaning to flit so a fly you know to flit around um, especially one of a stinging nature so a stinging fly okay and it's a uh, strong's h2070 okay z bob so uh, who who is this z bob Let's see if we can find um, clues in the Bible. So, then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebob, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Second Kings 1 verse 16 so here we can see that Baal Zebob um, was a god of Ekron okay so this is an interesting clue second Kings verse 1 verse uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 16 interesting to so Baal Zebob God of of Ekron, note, God with a little g. And God is upset that they are consulting this God with a little g. Okay? So this God with a little g does exist. Let's carry on with our investigations. So, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So, here, Belzebub is identified as the prince of the devils and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand Matthew 12 verse 24 to 25 but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God then the kingdom of God is come upon you or unto you or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house matthew 12 verse 28 to 29 so jesus speaks here of they they compare jesus here to belzebub they say jesus is casting out demons by belzebub okay and Jesus asks them, how can I cast out demons by Beelzebub? Beelzebub is a demon, obviously. So if Beelzebub casts out Beelzebub, demon casts out demons, and then their house is divided. So how, how can their house stand? So Jesus is basically saying, I can't be of the house of, of Beelzebub. I can't be part of their team because I'm, I'm doing the opposite of what they would do. They wouldn't cast out their own. Okay, um, and and Jesus is making a reference here to binding. Okay, 
So, Jesus is referring to this Beelzebub as a strong man. And Jesus is saying, can you take his spoil? So, Beelzebub is a strong man, okay, of a house. And he has spoil in the house. Okay, spoil. Obviously, spoil is stuff that you have stolen off someone else. Okay, so this Beelzebub is a strong man who has stolen goods off someone else and is in his house. And he's a strong man. Okay, and Jesus is saying, how can I get the spoil if I don't first bind the strong man? Okay, this is a very important conversation. Keep this in mind. Okay. So, and if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Matthew 12, verse 26 to 27. So, Beelzebub being acknowledged here okay um, Beelzebub is being acknowledged okay so here we have Beelzebub strong man has taken spoil and needs to be bound if the spoil is to be taken from him okay these are the references okay let's move forward so was Yeshua trying to tell us that Beelzebub is the same as the one who is bound in the abyss perhaps it's obvious from those passages that Beelzebub has something to do with being a strong man has something to do with being bound that's what Jesus is saying has something to do with with um, having taken spoil okay so of course in order to bind a strong man uh, you would need another strong man to do the binding so is there anywhere in the Bible that refers to Yeshua perhaps as a strong man Okay. Psalm 19 verse 4 to 6 says Their line has gone out through all the earth And their words to the end of the world In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun Which is like a bridegroom Now Yeshua of course we know is the bridegroom Coming out of his chamber what he's, uh, And rejoices like a strong man To run its race so the bridegroom is being referred to here as a strong man so could it be Yeshua who bound Beelzebub its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit is and its circuit to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat Psalm 19 verse 4 to 6 Okay, so the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Any Israelite who sacrifices an ox, a lamb, or a goat in the camp or outside of it, Leviticus 17 verse 1 to 3, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tent meetings to present it as an offering to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, that person shall be considered guilty of bloodshed. They have shed blood and must be cut off from their people. Leviticus 17 verse 4 This is so the Israelites will bring to the Lord the sacrifices they are now making in the open field. So the children of Israel used to make this, these sacrifices in the open field. They must bring them to the priest, that is, to the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting and sacrifice them as fellowship offerings 
Leviticus 17 verse 5. The priest is to splash the blood against the altar of the Lord at the entrance to the meeting, to the tent of meeting, and burn the fat as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. They must no longer offer any of their sacrifices to the goat idols to whom they prostitute themselves. This is to be a lasting ordinance for them and for the generations to come. Leviticus 17 verse 67. Very interesting here. So, from this passage in Leviticus, we can deduce that the people of Israel used to sacrifice to and worship a goat idol or goat demon. Question is, who is this goat demon? Why was this goat idol slash goat demon slash fallen angel so important that God incorporated him into the most important ceremony in the Jewish on the Jewish calendar the ceremony on Yom Kippur could the goat idol or goat demon god mentioned in Leviticus be the same as Azazel because Azazel was the name of the scapegoat in actual fact scapegoat is a mistranslation the translation for the goat used in the ceremony in Yom Kippur was the Azazel goat so could this goat idol or goat demon god be the same as Azazel, is that the reason why they use uh, goats in this ceremony? Let us continue. I think so. So, the Day of Atonement, instructions for priests. So, number one, sacrifice these two animals to atone for the sins of the high priest and his family. So, the high priest was to be cleansed. A bull. And, uh, a ram. Two, get two goats. Choose one to be a scapegoat or a zazel goat to bear the sins of the community. So the scapegoat was to bear the sins of the community. The other goat will be sacrificed. So the other goat was sacrificed. Okay. Three, Sacrifice these two animals to atone for the sins of the community. So the, the community were to be uh, cleansed. Uh, uh, a sheep and a goat. Or a ram and a goat. Um, number four. Burn incense in the most holy place and sprinkle the blood of the previous animal sacrificed onto the Ark of the Covenant. Five. The high priest is to verbally transfer the sins of the community onto the scapegoat, the Azazel goat. Why did they do this? 6. A man will then lead the scapegoat far into the desert and abandon it to die. Okay, so this was a ceremony on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Why did God enact this ceremony? this ceremony where the goats were brought to the high priests and then the priest would cast lots okay question is who did the scape or banished goat the Azazel goat represent there must have been a reason why God enacted this lots were cast to determine the Lord's goat from the scapegoat the Azazel goat and he shall take two goats and present them for the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Azazel goat, Strong's H5799. And Aaron 
shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, the Azazel goat, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat, Azazel goat, into the wilderness. Okay, Leviticus 16 verse 7 to 10. Okay, so lots. What did this ceremony of casting lots represent? Why did God enact this? Who is the Lord's goat? The ritual of casting lots to determine the Lord's goat from Azazel's goat was prophetic in that it depicted the time when lots would be cast to determine which goat would be sacrificed and which goat would be led away. The choice between Yeshua and Barabbas. Of course, the ashes of the animals were to be mixed with incense and taken into the Holy of Holies by the priests. And of course, burnt on the altar of incense, the ashes. And then the blood of the animals were to be mixed and sprinkled on the veil and sprinkled on the um, altar of incense, their four corners, and also sprinkled on the mercy seat. And this was supposed to be a form of appeasement. Uh, this was to appease the Lord so what was this ceremony pointing to very interesting so who is the wilderness goat note all sin was ascribed to the scape slash banished or azazel wilderness goat why is this why did they ascribe all sin to this goat? Okay. The Azazel goat was taken from the temple, led into the wilderness, and then later on, they started to cast the goat over a cliff. Perhaps the goat being cast over a cliff to its death is prophetic of what will happen to the banished Azazel goat at the end. Who is Azazel? Where is Azazel? The wilderness goat. This ceremony was obviously modeled after an incident Yahweh did not want the children of Israel and indeed the world to forget. That is why he incorporated it as a ceremony on the most important day of the Jewish annual calendar, Yom Kippur. So where can we find the origins of this ceremony? The origins of this ceremony can be found in the Bible as well as some extra biblical texts. Let us look at the book of Enoch, which gives us a lot of information with regards to this ceremony. So, Enoch chapter 8 and verse 2. And there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Semjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Amaros, the resolving of enchantments. Berichael taught astrology. Kokabel, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arachael, the signs of the earth. Shamziel, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried 
and their cry went up to heaven. Enoch chapter 8 verse 1 And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. Enoch 10 verse 4 And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert which is in Dudael and cast him therein. So, Azazel leads men astray and Azazel is bound and an opening is made in the desert in Dudael and Azazel is cast in. Enoch chapter 10 verse 5 to 6 and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light and on the day of the great judgment he shall be cast into the fire so remember the lord when he comes back will summon the fly at the furthest uh, at the uttermost part of the streams of egypt well it's very interesting that at a place called Napta Playa, which is right by the border of Egypt, at the furthermost, not far away from the furthermost part of the streams of Egypt, right there in the arrows, a place called Napta Playa, there is a formation. Jagged rocks are placed right there. You can't make this stuff up. There are jagged rocks placed in the wilderness at the furthest most parts of Egypt. Right? Napta Playa. Is this Dutael? You see the connection? So Yeshua tells us where this wilderness dwells. In that day the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt. In that day the Lord will whistle for Bel, Baal, Zebob. Dudael. I believe there's something bound in another realm underneath this. Enoch 10 verse 8 And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works of uh, through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. Where did we see this before? Remember? that the high priest ascribes all sin to the Azazel goat. The book of Enoch tells us here that all sin was to be ascribed to Azazel. Okay. Enoch turn verse 9. And to Gabriel said the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers for, uh, from among men and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for length of days shall they not have. Enoch chapter 10 verse 10 And no request that they i.e. their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf, for they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. 
And the Lord said unto Michael, Go, bind Sinjaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanliness. Enoch chapter 10 verse 12 And when their sons have slain one another and have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is for ever and ever is consummated. Enoch chapter 10 verse 13 In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever and whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations Enoch chapter 58 verse 7 to 8 says this in that day shall be distributed for food to monsters a female monster whose name is Leviathan, dwelling in the depths of the sea, above the springs of water, of springs of water, and a male monster whose name is Behemoth, which possesses, moving on his breast, the invisible wilderness. So Leviathan is the beast from out of the sea, and Behemoth is the beast from out of the earth that dwells in the invisible wilderness. His name was Dendain. So, the invisible wilderness is called Dendain, in the east of the garden, where the elect and the righteous will dwell, where he received it from my ancestor, who was man, from Adam the first man, whom the Lord of Spirits made. Then I asked of another angel to show me the power of these of those monsters how they became separated on the same day one being in the depths of the sea and one in the dry desert Do you see one in the sea and one in the desert one land one in the sea and he said thou son of man art here desirous of understanding secret things so god basically kept these two monsters these two monsters that are described as leviathan and behemoth leviathan dwelling in the sea and behemoth dwelling in the land secret so behemoth dutael in the depths of the abyss in another realm in the invisible wilderness dwells Azazel chained and kept alive Azazel is the same as Belzebub is the same as Baphomet he dwells in the invisible wilderness with his companion fallen angels waiting 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 the prince of the abyss Belzebub the goat fallen angel and the lord of the flies the fly at the end of the streams of Egypt Isaiah 7 verse 18a Azazel is the same as Belzebub is the same as Baphomet is the prince not the king the king is Abaddon the prince is Belzebub Baalzebub the goat fallen angel the beast from the earth the spirit behind the false prophet Baal the god they used to worship and have orgies before and sacrifice their children to the god of Ekron Baal Zebob Baphomet 
the same God. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. 2 Peter 2 verse 4 So, confirming that some entities had been cast into the abyss. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day Jude 1 verse 6 once again though the Bible reveals to us the fact that fallen angels are currently chained in the abyss their names are unknown however the book of Enoch reveals their names and the ceremony created by God where they use the Azazel goat also reveals their name Azazel is the one who dwells the uttermost parts of the streams of Egypt who dwells in the opening in the desert Dudael Dandayim the invisible wilderness And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will whistle for the fly that is in the furthest parts of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 18 Once Yeshua whistles for the fly, Azazel, Baalzebub's chains will be broken. Then he will be allowed to emerge from Dutael, Dendain, the invisible wilderness. Azazel Baalzebub, Baal, Prince of the Abyss, Hades, Hell, shall rise and rise and rise out of the Abyss, out of Dudael. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation 13 verse 11 to 12. So, this is the reason why Yeshua said do not go into the wilderness see a false Yeshua will walk out of the desert one day claiming to be Yeshua this false prophet will point to the Mahdi and say that he is the Messiah but he will be the false Messiah Matthew 24 verse 26 So if they say to you, Look, he, Yeshua, is in the desert. Do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms. The false prophet will come out of the earth, the desert, because the false prophet is Azazel. Baalzebub. Baal. When he emerges, he will try to take on the appearance of Yeshua, the true Lamb of God. Revelation 13 verse 11. The false Messiah, the false prophet, Isa, who wants to be like Yeshua, who claims to be Yeshua who claims to be Jesus the Christ the spirit of Baal and that is why today you see the spirit rising with the arches of Baal being placed in different strategic places you see this is the same creature Baal 
the same God who was worshipped in the old times. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. 1 Kings 18 verse 28 You see what the worshippers of Baal used to do then, cutting themselves, they still do now. Azazel is Baal, is Isa. On the Islamic day of Ashura, the prophet of Baal, Isa, cried with a loud voice and cut themselves according to their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out on them. 1 Kings 18 verse 28 The same thing they did back then they do now. Same thing they did back then they do now. Because they worship the same. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, Azazel, Isa, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. 1 Kings 19 verse 18. That is why they kiss the stone, because they worship Baal. And for those who believe that the church will be here when these entities arrive, then you will be calling Jesus a liar. That is why there can only be a pre-trib rapture. Because when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and some others Jeremiah or one of the prophets but what about you he asked who do you say I am Matthew verse 16 um, chapter 16 verse 13 to 15 Simon Peter answered you are the Messiah the son of the living God Jesus replied blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood but by my father in heaven Matthew 16 verse 16 to 17 and I tell you that you are Peter and on that rock I will build uh, sorry, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind see the reference to binding on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16 verse 18 to 19. So as long as the church is on the earth, Azazel will remain bound in the abyss. Because the gates of hell will not overcome the church. Otherwise the Lord will be a liar. So the spirit of Azazel is represented by the um, constellation Capricorn. And Azazel, Baphomet, Belzebub, the foolish worthless shepherd, when he emerges, will take on the equipment or appearance of Yeshua, the true Lamb of Yahweh. When he manifests, Yahweh will tell him to take on the appearance of the foolish worthless shepherd that's Yeshua now the Lord Yahweh will say to Yeshua take on the appearance of the foolish worthless shepherd this is in Zechariah chapter 11 verse 15 to 17 and when he emerges that's the foolish worthless shepherd Azazel he will try to imitate Yeshua the real lamb of Yahweh Revelation 13, verse 11 to 18. The lamb. It looks like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon. The false prophet. The false Jesus. That's the reason why Moses and Elijah will again testify to the fact that Yeshua is the son of Yahuwah. As they witnessed 
as at the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, Revelation 11, verse 3 to 6. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John 1, verse 29. Enoch 10, verse 12. All the earth has been corrupted by the effects of the teachings of Azazel. To him, therefore, ascribe all sin. So, Azazel was the cause of all sin. Yeshua takes away all sin. You see the difference? See the difference? The real and the false. The false prophet and Isa, the Islamic Jesus. So, the false prophet of the Bible governs alongside the Antichrist. Isa governs alongside the Mahdi. The false prophets in the Bible subordinate, uh, subordinate to the Antichrist. Isa subordinate to the Mahdi. The false prophets, the chief enforcer of the Antichrist policies, laws, and religion. Isa, the chief enforcer of the Mahdi's policies, Sharia law, and Islamic religion. The false prophet serves as the executioner for Jews and Christians who do not convert. Isa, the Islamic Jesus serves as the executioner for the Jews and Christians who do not convert the false prophets in the Bible. A descriptive clue as to his identity is given as a dragon in sheep's clothing. Isa claims to be Jesus the Lamb but acts to the contrary. The false prophets of the Bible abolishes Christianity, Judaism and all other religions. Isa, the Islamic Jesus abolished Christianity, Judaism, and all other religions. And these are some of the things that they say. You see, the Muslims refer to Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, as a Dajjal, al Masi ad Dajjal. They call our Savior the Antichrist. And they call the Antichrist the real Christ. So, descent and the killing of the Jal, the Antichrist, that's our Jesus. So Jesus, speaking here of Isa, Azazel, will descend at dawn while the Muslims are preparing uh, to pray the early morning prayer. Jabir reported that Prophet Muhammad said, A party of my followers will not cease to fight for victory until the day of resurrection. He, the Prophet, said, Then Jesus, at Isa, son of Mary, will come down. Their Imam will say, Come and lead our prayer. He will reply, Some of you are leaders over others on account of divine honor upon these people. Sahih Muslim. Prophet Muhammad said, then Jesus at Isa, son of Mary, will descend. The leaders of the Muslims will say to him, Come, lead us in the prayer. But he will say, No, you yourselves are leaders over one another. This, he will say, this is in view of the honor that Allah has bestowed on this nation, the Muslim nation, Sahih Muslim and Musnad Ahmed. The Prophet Muhammad said, while the Muslims will be making preparations to fight him, Antichrist, they will be lining up for the prayer, and the Ekwa will have been pronounced. Jesus, son of Mary, shall descend and lead them in the, in the prayer, and Allah's enemy, Antichrist, that is, our Yeshua, on seeing him, that's Isa, they're the one they call Jesus, shall start dissolving like salt in water. If Jesus, that's Isa, were to leave him, the Antichrist, that's Yeshua, alone, he, the Antichrist, Yeshua, would melt to death anyway. But Allah will have him, that's the Antichrist, Yeshua, be killed by 
Jesus, that Isa's had. And he, Jesus, that Isa, will show the Muslims his, that's Yeshua's, blood on his, that's Jesus, that's Isa's, spear. Did you hear that? Isa will defeat Yeshua with a spear. He'll stab Yeshua with a spear. Sahih Muslim. Abu Hurairah reported that Prophet Muhammad said, by the one whose hands my life is in, surely the son of Mary will descend among you as a just ruler. That's Isa. He will destroy the cross. Okay. This could mean that Jesus will put an end to Christianity. That's Isa. Who one they call Jesus. Who is actually Azazel. Kill the pig. Meaning Jesus will over will outlaw raising pigs. No, that's not what it means. It means the pigs are the Christians and the Jews. So he will kill Christians and Jews. And abolish this is from uh, the website Discovering Islam, by the way, discoveringislam.org. So and abolish the jizya, the tax on Christians and Jews will be abolished because Christianity and Judaism will end Sahir Bukhari okay because he will slaughter every Jew and Christian Prophet Muhammad said in the meantime while the Dajjal will be busy doing this and this Allah will send down the Messiah son of Mary that's Jesus okay Isa will descend in the eastern part of Damascus near the white minaret tower dressed in the two yellowish garments with his hands resting on the arms of two angels you see because when Jesus comes back he has the two witnesses uh, by his side Moses and Elijah that's the reason why uh, Isa Azazel does the same thing because he like he wants to imitate Jesus when he will bend down his head water drops the water drops will appear trickling down and when he will raise it it will appear as though pearl like drops are rolling down any disbeliever whom the air of his breath reaches and it will reach up to the last limit of his sight will fall dead then the son of mary will go in pursuit of the jowl and will overtake him at the gate of lud and will kill him sahih muslim trimzi Ibn Majah. Okay, so Dajjal, the one eyed oppressor, is how they describe Yeshua. So, is this indeed why, why would I say Yeshua is Dajjal, the one eyed oppressor? Why would I say such a thing? Well, maybe because the Bible says so. What? The Bible says our Jesus, Yeshua, will be the one-eyed oppressor, Dajjal. So, Yahweh speaking to Yeshua, Jesus, that's our Jesus, said the following. Then the Lord said to me, take again, note, take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd the equipment the vessel the appearance of a foolish shepherd did you hear that for i am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost or seek the young or heal the injured or feed the healthy but will eat the meat of the choice sheep tearing off their hooves zechariah 11 verse 15 to 16 woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock may the sword strike his arm and his right eye may his arm be completely withered his right eye totally blinded zechariah 11 verse 17. so the word for vessel there and the word for equipment is vessel okay instrument vessel the appearance okay 
the same way it's used in Second Corinthians 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the vessel, the appearance. So did you hear what I just read? Why did the Lord say to Yeshua, Jesus, take again the equipment, appearance of the foolish shepherd? In other words, Yeshua, that passage implies that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, has once before taken on the appearance of a foolish shepherd. So, the question is so this implies that Yeshua Jesus has in the past taken upon himself the equipment or appearance of the foolish shepherd in order to find out when Yeshua once before took on the equipment appearance of a foolish worthless shepherd we must return to the Yom Kippur ceremony and at this point I must stop and continue in the next video. So in the next video, we want to find out when did Yeshua take on the appearance or equipment of a foolish, worthless shepherd as described in Zechariah. Stay tuned. Watch my blows the horn here. I wish you peace.